All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Bobby Chandirami, who is just up the road in LA. How are you doing, Bobby? Doing great. Great to be here. Excellent. And uh, Bobby is a visionary with uncanny marketing intuition, a creative brand architect with a proven track record for generating spot on brand development and compelling messages that cattle that uh, that uh, catalyzes growth. And what we're going to talk today about is messaging and top messaging mistakes. So um, so Bobby, it's a noisy world out there at the best of times. Right. And uh, I think, you know, people are struggling in many ways to get heard and, uh, you know, people are trying lots of different things. So uh, when, when, it, when it comes to messaging, where's a good place to, how, number one, how do you know, how do you assess your current messaging and what process should you go through to actually figure it out if it's the yeah. right one or fix it or create new messaging? Absolutely. I think your messaging, if, if you want to know if your messaging is off, you've got to look at your results, right? Mm -hmm. um, everything comes down to sales. Everything comes down to yep. the types of clients that you're working with. If you are attracting a client that is not a right fit, now that could be an alignment with the types of clients you like to work with. That could be an alignment with the types of services that you offer. Maybe they're at, coming into your funnel and maybe asking you something different. They're asking you for services that are totally different. So if you want to know if your messaging is off, you just have to look at your results, right? Are you right. selling as much as you truly think you're capable of? Are you aligning your services with the types of clients that you're really interested in working with? And do you feel that your message reflects the truth of your services and who you are and what you represent, or does it sound generic, right? Are you spending a lot of money on, on advertising and you're not seeing a lot of results? Those are all key indicators that your messaging is off. Yeah. And, and, and I think, uh, part of it's interesting because I mean, people spend a lot of money obviously on advertising and, and Google advertising and all of that. And I think sometimes try to convince themselves that, it's all good even though the results aren't there it's all it's just good to be out there and somehow yeah. like through osmosis or whatever it'll happen eventually right and and that's such a good point you know another big messaging mistake i see is that people feel like they have an exposure problem right mm -hmm. and i never forgot this in in the middle of one of my trainings we do these awesome trainings where we coach entrepreneurs how to stand out in the marketplace and communicate their value and attract their best clients. And there were 76 people on my Zoom call and I asked them, I said, what do you feel is the problem with your business? Why do you feel you're not getting enough sales and leads into your business? And a lady raised her hand, she unmuted herself. This was Zoom, so you could see everybody on the call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and she said, my problem is I can't, I'm not getting in front of enough people. And I said, are you sure that's your issue? And she said, yes, it's an exposure problem. And I said, "Right." I go, I don't think that it is. I go, but let's, let's do a little experiment. You have five minutes to tell the whole group what it is that you do and how do you add value to your clients, right? And so she went off for like five minutes describing her, her services, her, her business, the value that she brings. And then at the end, she's like, okay, great. And I said, great, thanks. I said, raise your hand if you can understand how Sally adds value to you. And literally no one in the audience raised their hand. I go, even if you're not her customer, raise your hand if you understand how she adds value to her customers. No right. one raised their hand. And Sally like got to see visually, and she, I, I could see her scrolling through the pages and pages of people that were on, on the Zoom call. No one had their hand raised. And I said, so many entrepreneurs, so many service-based businesses, they think they have an exposure problem but when they're given an opportunity, and this is why there's so many of them are blowing money on advertising, because all the advertising people, they, they want you to think that you have a, an exposure problem. So you want to throw more money at it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is the most common like mistake and leak that I see in so many businesses that they think they have an exposure problem. So they're throwing all this money on advertising. They're wondering why it's not working. They're wondering why they're attracting the wrong people. They think everybody in their audience doesn't have money. 
You've heard that one before. That's another. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) So it's, it's, it's such a incredible thing to focus on, but you know, one of the most important things that most service-based businesses can focus on is really understanding who are they in the marketplace? How do they uniquely add value to the marketplace? Who is it that they really want to serve? And is their services matching up with who they want to serve? And then how do you Mm. communicate that in a clear, effective, powerful way where it resonates with that client and gets that client really excited to take that next step with you? And now that next step could be getting on a call with with the salesperson. It could be, uh, you know, reaching out, filling out a form or survey, like calling for a consultation, jumping on a discovery call, whatever that next step is. But if your marketing isn't currently doing that for you, there's a, there's a disconnect between the message that you're putting out there, the strategy that and the vehicle that you're using to put it out right. there and the audience that you're getting it in front of. Yeah. And, and how often does it, how often does it all come back to a, to the fundamental part of not really, as you just said, they're not really defining who your target audience is and matching, you know, your service. Here's the ideal target. Because let's face it. I mean, people all often fall into that trap where they sort of go, well, everybody's my customer. And you go, okay, well, that's not true. Uh, and and then even as you try to bring it down, there's a reluctance to get it down to a granular level because they feel like I might be excluding people. And then obviously those are people, yeah, you probably are and you should be. Yeah, that's such a good point. And both of us have such a strong sales background and we see it like we know as salespeople, we want to be on the phone with qualified leads that are interested in our services, mm-hmm. right? And, and so many business owners and so many entrepreneurs and service providers, they're like, we want to take this shotgun approach. We want to throw spaghettis on the wall, let everyone know we're here. And then whoever's interested will come to us. And the problem with that is you could, you could buy a Super Bowl ad, by the way, for, you know, a million, two million, whatever it is and get massive exposure. But is that really the best way to spend your advertising dollars? Right. Yeah. And it is so important to know that your services, no matter how good it is, isn't for everybody. The minute you start to understand that and the minute that you actually understand, you will actually get better results. The more specific you are with your services, that's when things start changing in your marketing, right? When you're like, hey, everybody, and I'll give you a great example of this. Um, I just went to Dallas recently. My, I'm from Texas. And my mom, I didn't realize my, my family's in Dallas and, my, and I'm watching a, a movie with my mom and I'm looking over at her and I'm seeing her do this and she's squinting. And I'm like, mom, what, what, what are you doing with your eyes? She's like, oh, I'm, I've been blind in this eye for three years. She hasn't told anybody. And so right. she can't see anything out of this eye. <clears throat> I'm like, that's, that's crazy. You, you haven't told anyone about it. She's like, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't think it was a big a deal. Cause I could see from this eye. And if I squint, I can actually see better from this eye. <laughs> I'm like, that's insane. So we actually, I started looking up is she, what, what ha- turns out is that she has a stage four ca- Brown cataract in her eye. And it was a very like severe case of cataract. Not very few doctors could actually go right. and operate on that. And, uh, so I started calling around who were the best cataract surgeons in the area. And, and I had some friends, you know, it, it, cause I, I used to work, you know, in the medical space. And so I reached mm-hmm. out to my doctor friends and we found, we, I called some people, some people are like, yeah, she could lose her eye. She could be blind forever. This is, yeah. and then I called another person and he's like, oh yeah, we do those all the time. Stage four, come on in. Let's, let's have a look at it. And we got there. He's like, I do about 10 of these a day. This is easy. She'll be feeling a hundred percent within a week. It's going to be awesome. This is what I specialize in, right? Who do you think I decided to go with? The guy that just didn't know and he worked on all sorts of cases every once in a while or the specialist? The yep. specialist always get called. The generalists never get called. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah, like- I think that's yeah. such a powerful message. It's so important, but so many entrepreneurs, they operate out of, uh, you know, in business, small business owners, they operate it out, out of the space of scarcity. I've got to just put myself out there so I don't lose any business, but you're actually losing business because you're a generalist. Yeah. And part of the, and part of that problem is, I think, is that when people, um, entrepreneurs or when people set up their businesses or whatever, is that they have unrealistic timelines, right? Uh, 
that, uh, yeah. let's face it, things never happen as quickly as we would like, and they take longer, and it's probably going to cost you more money than you anticipated. So if that's the case, then they get into panic mode about, I've just got to grab any business I can, because I yeah. need to to survive, instead of going maybe at the beginning, go, yeah, I'm, I'm going into a particular niche, and it may take me a while to build that up. But once I build that up, it'll be it, it'll be all good. But it's it's giving yourself a longer runway. Absolutely. It is giving yourself a longer runway. And I think like like managing your expectations, if you want to be a specialist in a space, you have to start to build your credibility in that space. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's actually it seems like a longer runway, but it's actually a shorter runway. When you look at both paths, if you take a service based business owner and you take the path of being a generalist and you wait till he's successful or she's successful and you do the same thing with a specialist, a specialist is going to be like when we work with our clients, we identify what's called your diamond clients, which are your most important clients, the only clients you should be in front of, right? Every other client that you try to get in front of that are not your diamond clients are just wasting your time, your resources and your energy. Unless you've got, you know, millions and millions of dollars to spend on advertising every month, then you should specialize in a space. So we tell our clients to focus on your diamond clients, get your message in front of your diamond clients. We help them identify that. And it's it's so important to do that because then if, if you have $10,000 a month on marketing, if you have $5,000 a month or $2,000 a month to spend on your marketing, would you rather just spend it as I'm a generalist as with your message, but also with a specific audience, right? I'd rather give a specific audience a very specific message that serves them with a very specific need. And that's how you quickly become a specialist in your areas, this really understanding how you uniquely add value, what your diamond clients are really struggling with, and how do you match how you uniquely add value to what your diamonds clients are struggling with, and something they wish they had and they needed, and start putting that information in front of those specific clients with your expertise, and you're immediately going to start to become that authority. And again, it takes, it takes time, exactly what you said. They have to know you. They have to like you. They have to trust you. Most service-based entrepreneurs that are advertising online, their clients have to see them at least 16 times before they take that next step with them. And that next step could be even just watching a video or signing up for a webinar or signing up for a training or signing up for an orientation or discovery call. Yeah. And I think the other part is, and you probably come across this a lot, but uh, when you're working with your clients is, is that people are so excited about what they do and they want to, they want to get that into their message. They want to tell the world, this is what I do. Yeah. Rather than, as you were pointing out, rather than sort of maybe stepping over and looking at it from the outside in and saying, okay, yes. here are the people I want to serve. What, yeah. what do they want to hear? Exactly. That's such a good point too. And, and it's a balance of both, right? Like, because mm -hmm. You could also get in the trap where, you know, when I was starting my my agency, people were like, hey, do you do this? And I'm like, no, but I, like you said, I needed the money when I first started. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. But that wasn't my specialty. That wasn't what I was better, in the, better than anybody else in the world at. But I started taking on all these auxiliary projects. And then I was working in a space that I wasn't an expert in producing subpar, you know, services. And then when I started to shift my focus to what I was really strong with, which is, you know, positioning, which is messaging with this, which is sales training, that's when things started really honing in and specifically for service based business owners or service based businesses that are looking to grow and scale their business, but they also have to have high quality services, right? Because like when you, when I started becoming more and more specific about my message, about my niche, about my positioning, about how I communicate that, about the problems that I solve within that niche, that's when I started experiencing explosive growth for my clients. And that's the, you know, we, we've created like a methodology that we teach our clients to do very similar, that same process to get really good results. The more time you spend on really understanding that market, like you said, uh, the, the more important you know, you're going to be to that market and, and people have to understand that, you know, them and that you can really uh, like, I'm not going to listen to somebody if I'm listening to them and I'm like, oh, he just doesn't get my industry. He doesn't get what I'm really struggling with. You know, um, there's an awesome trainer that is a friend. He's my friend's brother. I don't know if you've heard of this fit to fat guy. Have you heard of this? No, no, I haven't actually. So there was this really like fit trainer that would, he was famous because he would get these really heavy people and he would help them lose a lot of weight. 
And he kept getting this objection from these heavy people saying like, you don't know what it's like to be fat. You've never been fat. And so he, he, he went on this journey to really have, and I'm not saying you should do this for your clients, but he went on this journey to gaining all this weight and he became like super overweight and super unhealthy. And he says, okay, let's do this together now. And he said the perspective shift that he got made him such a better trainer. Right. And it's like, it's that deep, it's that deep commitment to really understanding your diamond clients and really understanding what they're going through. So you can really start to understand and serve them on such a deep level using your zone of brilliance, which is what really makes you unique and different. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a fascinating story uh, because I do think, let's face it, we get caught up in our own business and we think, and, and even when we get our messaging right and all that, we think, okay, now you should be interested. But the fact is, we don't know what's going on in the customer's world. We don't know um, what their time frames are. Oh, there's a lot of things for us that we need to dis- discover. So it's a it's a first step. It's not a it's not the end be all end all solution. That's so true. And and just really understanding what they're struggling with, and really understanding how you can really serve them. And and I even tell service based business owners if you're thinking about releasing a new product before you do that, you know before you release a new service that you're offering to your clients, start to really understand them, like reach out mm-hmm. to them and ask them specific questions around what is it that they've tried? What is it that you wish you had? And really diving deep, because can you imagine how much easier? And, and we know this with selling, it's it's fun to sell a product that people want. Sure. It's fun to sell a product that people want, and it's easier to sell a product that people want. And it's always the, your best position if people are calling you for your product rather mm. than you cold calling, right? No yeah. one, I mean, I'm a sales guy and I don't like cold calls. I, I had a cold call the other day. A guy goes, hey, can I talk to your shipping department? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> wait, no, I mean, like, we're happy with our shipping. We're good to go. Uh, I have another business. And he's like, he's like, I just want to get your email. Can I just get your email and send you information? He was very abrupt, very interruptive. Mm. And I'm like, I'm like, thank you so much. And I was polite because I'm polite to yeah. salespeople because I, I know what it's like, you know, cold calling. And I go, hey, man, I really appreciate you calling. And thank you for the information. I, I'm just not looking for yeah. other, you know, shipping departments. And he hangs the phone up. And I'm like, <laughs> you are kidding me. This is crazy. And I call him back and I'm like, hey, like, d- like, do you think that that's going to get you closer to a relationship and having me change my mind about my shipping department? You know, maybe you could have said, hey, man, we're we're so happy to serve you in any way we can. Is it OK if I if I reach back out to you? Um, you know, I, I'm happy to do that. Let me know how I can support you. We, we have the best rates and maybe throw in like a cool message about yeah. what why he's different, why I should give a shit. Right. And he and, and, he, and I asked him and he's like, hey, but you weren't a customer anyways. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's such poorly trained salesperson. Yeah. And, it, and, and yeah. it's like it's costing the company money and and it's so important they're they're paying the sales guy right maybe they're paying him on 100 percent commission maybe they're paying him salary but the first line of experience that i have of his company if it's a cold call is that and it's a poor message he doesn't understand his audience he doesn't understand how to have this sales call and the message is off right yeah what i what i love about what you've outlined just there is is the essence of messaging is how you can have the best messaging in the world. You can have the best marketing in the world, but let's face it. Uh, oftentimes it's a salesperson that is the first point of interaction you have. Yeah. So if they're not on message or if their message is terrible or delivered like that, it doesn't matter. You can spend billions on the other messaging. Yeah. It's going to be undone by the first time somebody interacts with your company. This is the sad thing about that too. That's such a good point. This is such the sad thing of that. Okay. So let's go back to my marketing example. Okay. So you're spending, Mm -hmm. let's say you get a two to 5% conversion on your ad. So people are seeing your ads, they click on it. They decide to fill out your form, right? So if, if, if 10,000 people see it, so let's say we're here, this many people see your ad. Okay. This many people actually like are interested in it, this many people actually click on it, and this many people actually fill out the form and eat that little thing cost you a lot of money to get those Mm -hmm. forms filled out, right? So we have, we figured that out. That's dialed in. That's amazing. That's a huge milestone for your business. Now the next 
step is a discovery call or booking a call or learning about your information or going through an orientation or going through, you know, whatever it is, a product demonstration or a service demonstration. And they have that kind of experience in it. Like literally all of your marketing, all of your efforts are just gone. Right. And it doesn't matter how good you are as a marketer. You have to have that message has to ring through from the beginning, the first point of contact all the way through your sales content salesperson all the way through the follow-up process as well yeah and and that's what i think that's where a lot of people fall down because uh you know they roll out their messaging or whatever and they don't uh, and they don't make sure everybody understands it can articulate it because they think oh well they don't need that you know this is it's on our yeah, website not a client. And, I, they, and and that's yeah and they think they don't need it but like 80 percent of your clients 80 to 90 percent of your clients will buy within the first two years which means mm. like they won't like 20% of your buyers, if you're doing phenomenal marketing, 15 to 20 will buy like right away. Like, Hey, this is a need that I have. I'm interested. I'm looking right now. Let's do it. So 20%, 15 to 20% will be fast actors. If you're doing a phenomenal job on all the other things that we talked about. And then 80% of the prospects that are qualified that are interested in looking will make that decision within the next two years. So like you could blow it like that and then all you've literally wasted, you know, the, the opportunity and people yeah, don't, don't remember. So many people don't remember like exactly what you said, but I remember how I felt when the guy interrupted my day, he was rude on the phone and then he hangs up on me. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Because there you go. I mean, all the all the money in the world, and there's the impression that you're left with. And it's like that whole end to end customer experience. It's yeah. I always like to use the I used to like to use the 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 analogy of, of flying, right? And the, I think a lot of people would be getting back to doing that in a while. But but you can get you can get to the airport on time. You can have a really great check in process. The flight can go flawlessly, leaves on time, lands on time. Then your bags are delayed like oh. ten or fifteen minutes coming off. Yeah. What's your what experience? What do you tell everybody about? How was your trip? Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. And the reality the was, it wasn't remember. terrible. It was you just had a little blip at the end. But that's how yeah. we're wired as people. So if you're not having this, if you're not having a consistent experience across your company when people interact with it, you're doing you're doing exactly you're just undermining everything. That's so important. And and yet it's so overlooked, right? Mm hmm. And and as you said, that guy who called you, I mean, that maybe that company's good. Who knows what it is? But uh, he certainly has undermined. He just wasted all their marketing budget. <laughs> I know, I know, it was crazy. I'm sure they're they're. Uh, I I actually thought because of the experience, I'm like maybe this was a spam call. Maybe this guy was just trying to get my credit card or something. So I actually yeah. reversed, looked up the phone number, and I found out the name of the shipping company, and it's a legitimate company. And I'm like, this is crazy. Mm. Um. But yeah, like really having an, and that goes back to really understanding your, your clients, yeah. right? Like if you understand your diamond clients, okay, they're busy, they're professional, they're making decisions that you're not so many salespeople. And you know, this from selling so many salespeople have get into this zone of, okay, my product is so important. And I think my product is important because it's my world and my clients yeah. should think it's important and it should be their world, but it's not. No. In many cases, it's an interruption. In really good cases, they're interested, but they're also busy. And they're, yeah. you know, Forbes magazine says your clients are already exposed to over 10,000 marketing messages a day. And how are we going to be relevant? How are we going to be exciting? How are we going to be up front in our clients' minds when they're making that decision? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I just think it, this is such incredible, incredibly important, again, the focus and, and the messaging. Hey, listen, Bobby, this has been fantastic. And all of Bobby's information is going to be below this video, uh, the company's exp explosive growth. Uh, yeah. But before we go, Bobby, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to provide you guys with a link. I've got a free training called Position for Profit, where we take service-based entrepreneurs and we teach them how to stand out in the marketplace in a category of one different from a differentiated standpoint. So we become hyper relevant to our audience. And it's it's a training that I usually sell for like 3K. I just like to invite your audience uh, to join for free. I'll give you a special link um, where they sure. can join. And I'd love to have you as well, because I, you know, yeah, I know that- Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I will, yes. Yeah, so we'll put the- owners. Yeah, so we'll put the we'll put the uh, the link uh, below the video as well, and make sure um, the people sign up for it. Listen, that's fantastic. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, 
Again, thanks, Bobby. Great insights, great information. I would uh, encourage you to go check out Explosive Growth. Uh, and thank you for listening and watching. And I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.